dough, having to mull all these resentments around in your skull. When I would just bet that if we could get our bones on the table, we'd surely be able to build something new. I'll get the glue. Maybe <laughs> assemble, they start to resemble a creature with traits. We could both emulate who's famous for getting along with his mates. Bone by bone, we'll build a skeleton bone by bone. The skeleton who created us. So where to begin delving within? Our bones are so numerous, I just want to humor us. And where is the bliss in squabbling like this? Let's cut the crap, yalla, toss me that scapula, me oh my. See how they die. Why are we struggling when we could be juggling them bone by bone? Forget the skeleton bone by bone. I'm becoming convinced that the more we resolve all our bones of contention, though we may only cover a third of it, the more they'll dissolve into things without bones, which otherwise are known as invertebrates. <laughs> Saturday, 
I rented a couple of dick flicks. You know, <laughs> guys with guns riding around in large phallic shaped vehicles. <laughs> Buddy films like Lethal Weapon or Con Air. Anything with submarines, airplanes, gangsters, or Schwarzenegger. <laughs> when I'm sick for some reason, these movies keep my attention. Plus, the guys are usually really good looking, and the dialogue is so deep. I can follow it no matter how fuzzy brained I feel. Are you talking to us? Are you talking to us? He's talking to us. He's talking to us. Are we going to let him get away with that? What, we're talking to us? We're talking to us. Are we going to let him get away with Look, motherfucker. When we're ready to order, we'll order. <laughs> I'm talking to you. <laughs> Do you see this butter knife? Do you see this butter knife? You step out of line again and your balls will have an appointment with this butter knife. <laughs> now get us a couple of coffees. Cream, two sugar. Go! Hey, buddy, remember the knife. <laughs> that was Saturday. On Sunday, I was feeling a little better, so I was in the mood for something different, and I rented a chick flick. You know, tender tales of female friendship, romantic comedies, anything by Merchant Ivory or Jane Austen. <laughs> this particular one was a romantic comedy, which can be so delicious, because it's all about falling in love. Did you ever notice how these movies always end when the hard work of building a relationship starts? It's all about courtship, attraction, and sexual tension. And the men in these movies always say the right things. Brittany, my love. <laughs> I remember the first time I saw you like it was just yesterday. Um, actually, it was just yesterday. <laughs> um, I was standing in the lobby, lost both literally and figuratively, when I looked up. Yeah. <laughs> 
waitress in a 50s style gown. I have on a Jane Austen period dress, lots of lace, empire waist, pushing up my breasts, making enormous cleavage. It's really busy. I'm approaching a customer who's sitting on a window seat. He's incredibly handsome. Blue eyes, nice teeth. And he has on this beautifully cut navy blue double-breasted suit. I notice that there's a bulge under his left arm, and I wonder if that's where he keeps his gun. I'm repelled, yet strangely attracted. <laughs> Cautiously, I ask, may I help you? For some reason, I have a British accent. <laughs> may I help you? He stares at me, mesmerized. May you help me? May you help me? <laughs> yes, may I help you? At that point, all the background noise disappears and is replaced by Vivaldi, Sonata, Concerto, something romantic. Do you know what your voice sounds like to me, huh? No, what? An angel. <laughs> An angel, does it? Yeah, it does. Geez, am I in love or what? <laughs> I don't know, are you? Those red lips, that crooked little smile. Brilliant hazel eyes, your wit, your charm. I tell you, I'm personally turned off by the waif-like models of today. So when I say to you that your voluptuous little body reminds me of one of those classic nudes from the Renaissance, please take it as the utmost compliment, huh? You're rather handsome yourself, really. So uh, what time do you get off work? Right now, actually. <laughs> what do you say we do a picnic or something? <gasps> a picnic! <laughs> <laughs> I'll have my chef pack us up a basket of gourmet goodies. My chauffeur will drive us out to my country estate not far from here. Where there's a sweet little babbling brook. We can set a blanket out under the trees. I'll read you poetry while you gorge yourself on delicious chocolate cake and champagne. I'll brush your hair, I'll massage your feet, I'll bring you to multiple orgasms until you beg me to stop. Did I mention these are the kind of orgasms known only to you in your dreams? <laughs> Peter. 
get down to the skimpy little black number lots of lace. <laughs> yes. Those were the names. Now what do I see? Polar fleece. <laughs> lots and lots of polar fleece. Sweaters. Socks. It's comfortable. My feet are cold. Warm underwear year round. She has this thing for Christmas called the couch potato. <laughs> it's this sack, right? Absolutely shapeless. Long sleeves. <laughs> Two holes at the bottom for her feet. Zips up to her chin. <laughs> it's like a Dr. Denton for adults. <laughs> this, my friends, is not romance. Sad fact is, I haven't seen the right romance wear in this household for way too long. Listen you, that's 1-800-LISTEN-YOU. <laughs> <laughs> 
gist of what we needed. But not much more. Much more. Selective hearing, that's what I'm fearing. You remember to pick up the beer. I couldn't find a lot. Or the rest you forgot. What's this swimsuit swim edition doing here? Spousal deafness. Huh? Spousal deafness. What's that? It wasn't like this when we dated long ago. Oh, this is such a bore. I've heard it all before. No, you haven't. And I should know. Idiotic, idiotic, haircut, just a little tip of my nose is showing. Idiotic, 
trick's overdue. I'm afraid you'll have to wait too. <laughs> Cause what's testing our endurance is this friggin' car insurance that says they'll cancel if we don't pay in less than 15 days. And to make things even more frantic, we owe our shirts to Bell Atlantic. <laughs> Welcome to Bell Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't he the voice of Darth Vader? <laughs> Welcome to Bell Atlantic. I also happen to represent your student loan, Susan, Stop it. which is still screwed Stop up. It. You may want to try to call it them again. Yeah, when I was spare two hours, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> oh, um, while I'm thinking of it, you need to remember to pick up an anniversary card for your parents. Oh, right. And a birthday card for your brother. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and we have to call <laughs> Pam tonight. S. S. A. Pam? <laughs> yeah, it's the anniversary of her divorce. I wonder how come she didn't have a party this year. <laughs> she better. The food was great last year. <laughs> so you'll call her then, right? Yeah. Hey, that illustration job came through. Great. Only they want it the day after tomorrow. So I'm afraid whatever we've got planned for tomorrow night, I'm going to have to cancel. What were we doing tomorrow night? I don't know. It's your department, isn't it? Hey. Kidding. No, weren't we going to discuss vacation options? Ah, vacation <laughs> negotiations. How <laughs> about Friday? Well, if they like my black and white drawing, I've got to do the color one on Friday. How about Saturday? And I have the overnight seminar. Oh, right, right. God, you know you need a vacation when you're too busy to talk about vacation. I'll tell you the truth, Susan. I don't know, even know if we can afford it. I think vacation's <laughs> looking more and more like two lawn chairs out in the driveway. <laughs> Come on. Sad fact is, we just don't make enough money to support our lifestyle. Gordon, we don't have a lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Bye.